Hello, you're watching Got Space Game, it's time for DCS and 3LS. Today we're in the Strike Eagle, showing how to use the terrain following radar. I'll show you manual mode, and then autopilot, and finally an explanation of the radar symbology. It's important to note that the terrain following radar is part of the nav FLIR pod and won't be available without it. As always, useful control bindings will be on screen at the end of the video. Select a master mode of your choice. Any master mode will work, although air-to-air -air mode gives limited navigational coupling. On the left MFD, bring up the terrain following page. On the right MFD, bring up the HSI and make sure the auto sequence is boxed. Set the range as desired. 10 nautical miles works quite well. Set the low altitude warning about 50 feet below the height you're planning to fly at. Into the scratch pad, 150 LAW. Next we'll set our MEA. This is the altitude the plane will fly itself to if you mess up the terrain following. It's set per steer point, so select the steer point first, type the altitude into the scratch pad, and select MEA. In reality, you'll probably want to do that for each waypoint while on the ground. Check radar out on, turn terrain following radar on. Main symbology consists of a steering cue and a pitch cue. Turn the aircraft to place the velocity vector on both of them. Maintain ground speed from 400 to 650 knots. Aiming somewhat above the pitch cue will help you manage your descent, especially if you can't see the ground. The screen on the left displays the topography ahead. Very importantly, the point where the straight line meets the shaded curve shows the distance to the terrain at the velocity vector. Currently we are 6 nautical miles from this point on the terrain. You can use this to help anticipate the terrain ahead and level off when you need to. The terrain here is quite flat, so it follows a similar shape to the middle logarithmic curve. When the middle curve overlaps the top of the shaded curve, you'll be at the target height. The radar tape comes alive at 1,500 feet. As the pitch cue comes alive, manoeuvre the aircraft to follow it with the velocity vector. It takes some practice. Try to keep the velocity vector more or less at the top of the box. When you pass your steer point, turn to follow the next one. Keep your aircraft's bank angle within the carrots. If you bank too steep or turn too tight, then an automated fly-up will occur. There's a turn rate warning, so I'll just ease off the turn. You can select your terrain clearance height using any of the numbered buttons along the MFD. Watch what happens to the middle line on the graph and the pitch cue as we select 300 feet. Pitch cue is telling us to go down till the middle line meets the shaded curve, then we level off. Now let's couple the autopilot to the train following radar. Select TF Couple. The plane is now pitching itself to hold the correct height over the ground. And you can turn the plane by banking the wings. You can select a hard ride to command a more aggressive pitch down manoeuvre. Passing waypoint 2, we just banking towards waypoint 3, flying gently, not applying any pitch. If you need to make a much more aggressive turn, press and hold the paddle switch. This will disengage all autopilot and inhibit any fly-up behaviour. You can also use this to cancel a fly-up that's already started. There's the steering cue, wings level. Finally, let's enable nav-coupled autopilot for full automatic flying. This won't be available in air-to-air -air master mode. Select autopilot and steering mode nav. Now you can sit back, relax, take selfies with the Wizzo, and watch the plane fly itself. But let's watch how the radar display relates to the terrain ahead of us. The shaded portion of the curve represents the actual radar returns, and the dotted line above it is what they call the synthetic return. That's your main source of information about the terrain. A gap in the radar return usually represents a hidden depression behind a hilltop. Where the synthetic return rises to meet the middle line, that indicates rising terrain. Where it runs parallel to the middle line, that indicates reasonably flat ground. Finally, as mentioned before, but very important, if the horizontal line meets the radar return, that indicates a collision course with the ground. Here you can see the aircraft heading towards the rising terrain ahead. I've been Dan, you've been watching DCS and 3 or less from Got Space Game. Massive thanks to all my Kofi supporters. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for more 3-minute DCS tutorials covering all of your favourite modules.